What is up everybody and welcome back to the Riding Dad channel or welcome and if this is your first video you are in for a treat because we're installing a six disc clutch setup in the Honda Grom versus what came on the Honda which was a five disc setup. So if you don't know much about or haven't looked into the clutch setups you may be asking yourself or trying to ask me what is the difference between the six disc setup versus the five disc setup? Well, one disc. I wouldn't leave you hanging like that. So the difference is basically they're skinnier discs. You'll see when I do the install, they're a little bit skinnier. Oh, by the way, don't <laughs> Don't pay attention to the fact that this has no wheels on it and it's currently on a jack stand and everything. I'm in the middle of switching out tires and getting my wheels powder coated. Uh, I have some parts lying around my garage. So that video is partially filmed. Look forward to that video in probably about a week, two weeks maybe. Um, but the clutch I installed a few weeks ago and I'm just now catching up to being able to edit that video and I realized I forgot to do an intro and an outro for that so whatever that's why we're here anyway so the stock like I said the stock clutch on the Grom has five discs so that means there's five friction plates and there's five spacer plates I'm not sure what the technical term for the spacer plates is um, like I said you'll see in the video more what I'm talking about but there's five of each of those what a six disc clutch in theory should do is give you more friction, a sturdier clutch feel, a sturdier clutch engagement, um, and then possibly just improve in general clutch response. So if you didn't watch my very first kind of clutch E video, I installed the 80% stiffer springs. I put a Camara lifter plate on it with six holes instead of the uh, the kind of stock three that came with it, and I tapped out the other three holes in I don't remember what it's called, but it's like the bass the the lifter. It's not the lifter plate, but I remember it's. Look at that video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, there's three screws that hold the from the stock factory. There's three screws that hold the clutch together, uh, and th uh, six springs, but three screws. Like I said, I got the 80% stiffer springs changed it out to accept six screws got some different screws uh, and then this video obviously is going to be upgrading the actual clutch clutch rings the discs themselves uh, i do have a video coming up it'll either be the next video or the video after probably the next video though uh, i'm going to be changing out a oil pump as well it's right there so if you see things in this video that don't 100 percent look like they were there at the beginning of this video ignore that I will talk about that in the next video because I filmed this all at once. I'm just breaking it up into two videos because there was no way I was going to take everything out, put it back just to take it out again for a different video. That would have been ridiculous. I'm not going to give you my, you know, like impressions on this setup first because I haven't ridden nearly enough miles on it for me to tell you what I think about it. I don't do reviews like that. I, I make sure I vet the products before I tell you guys my opinion on them. But I can tell you just from installing it that the quality of the product looks pretty high. And I mean, it's six discs. It takes up the same amount of space, but it's smaller. So it should have more of a, uh, a positive engagement and possibly give you more of that friction zone to kind of play with because the stock ground, there's like almost no friction zone. It just slips all the time or is just kind of engaged. All right, I'm done babbling in the beginning. Let's flip this bike sideways. I will tell you to get to it. Uh, like if you watch my 80% stiff for spring video, you'll, you'll have to take the rear set off and then you just take all these screws off. Um, I'll talk more about it in the actual, you know, breakdown and then the actual install of the video in a few seconds. But just to give you a heads up, you will have to take that off. And then you have two options. You can either drain all the oil out before doing this or what I do because I'm going to have to drain the oil in like two weeks when I do a different install anyway. So what I do is just tip it over. I get my uh, moving blanket, tip the whole thing over on its side. This is a super lightweight bike. I probably weigh more than this bike. Um, just tip it over so the oil doesn't leak out. And then when it's on its side, none of the oil will come out. You'll just have a little bit of that, you know, residue over your parts. So, all right, let's flip her over. I'll bring you guys closer and we'll explain what I did for this six disc install.
get to the clutch basket, we're gonna have to remove the oil spinner. Removal of the oil spinner and the clutch basket requires the use of a specific tool that is double-sided and made specifically to remove and install the oil spinner and the clutch basket on these Honda grounds. Incrementally loosen all of these clutch spring bolts holding the clutch basket together and then take that piece off. We're going to separate the bearing from that a little bit later on. Make sure to put it in the freezer as soon as you get it off of that. It'll help with reinstalling it back onto the lifter plate. When removing or installing the clutch basket, this little bowl accompanies it and it has to be removed or installed with the clutch basket as one. Once the whole clutch basket is out of the bike, we're going to take the actual plate assembly out of the basket and remove all of the stock discs and spacers. We're going to replace them with the six disc set from SMR. Again, the link is in the description. SMR specifically says to coat everything in oil before you install it. And the order is going to start with the actual friction ring and then a spacer and so on and so forth until you have everything completed, making sure everything is aligned as best as you can before you reassemble it. And then upon reassembly, you'll see that it takes a little bit of finesse just to make sure that everything fits inside of the clutch basket as it's supposed to. Install the springs and the screws just very lightly to hold everything together while we're putting it back in the bike. Then we're gonna go ahead and tighten everything down, reinstall everything in the reverse order that we took everything out, obviously. Put the cover back on and call it a day.
pretty easy, right? Uh, not too bad. Like I said in the beginning, I do have some other stuff going down, down, going on down there. I have the Koso oil pump as well. Uh, things to look forward to if you've never seen anything on the channel. Like I said in the beginning, obviously the wheels powder coated, change your tire. That'll apply to pretty much every motorcycle. Um, I have a Koso air filter that's behind you guys that I need to put in. And I have a very exciting engine mod that I'm not releasing too many details about. I want it to be a surprise, but uh, let's just say it's 186 reasons why the Grom will be more fun. And if this is your first time stopping by, my name is Chris. Obviously, this is the Ride and Dad channel. This is obviously a Honda Grom. Outside of the garage right now is my 2020 Harley Davidson Lowrider S, the M8 Softail platform. I have some stuff uh, coming in for that, and I also have a whole build series on my channel, one of the playlists, already devoted to all the stuff I did to that bike. It's uh, quite extensive, not too in-depth yet for engine stuff-wise, but. Uh, quite extensive of a list of things I've done to that bike. And like I said, obviously you get this to look forward to. So please do hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. If you turn on the post notifications, you'll never miss any one of my videos. And currently, depending on when you're watching this, I am still doing a giveaway for some Harley parts and some Ryan Dad merch as well as all the merch you can always just regularly buy, which the link is in all of the descriptions down below. Uh, but that giveaway will end December, I think it's the 23rd, whatever that Wednesday is before Christmas, I believe it's the 23rd. So definitely make sure you check that video out if you are into any of that, and check all my other videos out because uh, we have over 80 videos right now, and I'm currently still posting every Wednesday at noon and every Saturday at 5 p.m. So I would really appreciate you checking all that stuff out. As always, comments are appreciated on any and all of my YouTube videos. I really do enjoy the engagement with my uh, subscribers. I love talking to you guys and I love hearing the feedback. But if you want to have a private conversation or a one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, send me pictures of a product or an issue you're having, anything like that, Instagram is always the easiest place to do that. Direct message me, you know, slide into my DMs. Uh, it's the Riding Dad over there on uh, Instagram, that's my handle over there as well. It's on everything that I will ever have for it. And if this is your first video, I really do appreciate you clicking on it and I hope that you will enjoy many more of my videos to come. And if you are a loyal subscriber, I am very glad to have you. Much appreciated. Before I go, I do have to tell you that there's two videos on screen, one of which YouTube thinks you're gonna like, the other I just recently uploaded, so please check out one or both of those. And until the next time, guys, ride safe, have fun, dads.